I'm Brian Markwalter. I'm Senior Vice President of Research and Standards at the Consumer Technology Association. <clears throat> Our next C-Space Storyteller session will explore branded mm -hmm. content. We'll learn about industry best practices to drive scale and audience engagement. Today we're joined by speakers from AOL, Intel, and the Content Collective, which is part of Omnicom Media Group. From AOL, please welcome Jimmy Maiman, the Executive Vice President and President of AOL Content and Consumer Brands. Jimmy leads AOL's portfolio of content brands, as well as AOL's content strategy and OTT operations, which all together reach a global audience of over 500 million unique visitors every month. Prior to joining AOL, Jimmy co-founded GoViral, an early innovator in online video production and distribution, developing video advertising platforms able to track, distribute, and host video ads across multiple sites online. Under Jimmy's guidance, the company evolved from being primarily uh, uh, involved in video production to focusing on platform development, allowing it to rapidly scale its operations. Since joining AOL, Jimmy has served in several roles, including Senior Vice President of International and most recently as CEO of Huffington Post, where he has made international expansion, profitable growth, and improved video operations his three key priorities. Joining Jimmy is Claudia Cahill, the Chief Content Officer and founder of Omnicom Media Group's content and entertainment practice, The Content Collective. The Content Collective's offices in Los Angeles, Chicago, and New York service Omnicom clients including Apple, Visa, PepsiCo, JCPenney, Lowe's, and GE by leveraging brand media investments to generate integrated custom media and content programs in theatrical, television, and digital mediums. With Content Collective's strategic alignment to Omnicom Media Group's investment team, Claudia and her team are developing larger investment-led partnerships that will result in more creative and content opportunities for clients packaged in with media investments. In 2015, Claudia and the Content Collective team launched ReadyMade Studios, a data-led and informed programmatic creative solution that can be optimized in real time. Prior to joining OMD, Claudia created the brand practice team at Levity Entertainment Group, where she developed and led the Pepsi Refresh Project's game-changing custom media and content approach. She led Conductor, one of the first branded entertainment uh, independent shops in the business, leading global award-winning custom programs for Unilever's Axe brand, Nestle's Stouffer's, and Lean Cuisine, and the controversial Bud TV program. Claudia has spent her entire career in the ever-evolving intersection between brands and entertainment, pioneering proprietary processes and models along the way. Along with Jimmy, Jimmy and Claudia, we'll be meeting Becky Brown, who is Vice President in the Global uh, Marketing and Communications Organization and Director of Digital Marketing and Media Group at Intel Corporation. Wonderful keynote last night, by the way. She has overall responsibility for Intel's connected consumer experience, which encompasses the company's digital marketing and advertising investments and strategies. Brown leads a global team defining Intel's roles and investments in a breadth of media, developing relationships across the advertising and digital ecosystem, and building marketing capabilities and solutions to connect the, the customer journey. Brown joined Intel in 1992 and spent the first 14 years of her career in various product marketing and sales positions. Since joining her current marketing team, she has focused exclusively on digital marketing, including digital advertising, digital capabilities, data management, content, communities, distribution, influence, and impact. Before assuming her current position in 2013, Brown was director of social media for Intel. In that role, she is responsible for the global strategy, framework, and tools to enable and measure social activations across the organization. While in that position, she and her team helped Intel's social communities grow from 60,000 to more than 50 million worldwide. Brown also oversaw the creation of Intel's Social Media Center of Excellence and the launch of Intel IQ, a branded curated website spotlighting the role of technology in people's lives. Please welcome uh, Jimmy Maiman, Becky Brown, and Claudia Cahill.
Thank you very much. We are here to talk about native advertising branded content. Uh, we could have curated, uh, I think, a better intro that you know we normally advise advertisers on how to bring uh, their content to life in our content section. That uh, sorry that you had to sit through that. It was a little bit long. <laughs> <laughs> um, what we are here to discuss today is obviously from a publisher. Uh, from an agency and from a client perspective, what is it that we are seeing here in this very interesting space that's predicted to grow 35% over the next year? What are the different formats that, uh, that are prevailing? What are the things that are working and what's not? And, and really before we kind of jump in in some of the deeper questions here, I think I would like you guys to, to talk a little bit about, you know, how do we even define this space? What is, you know, branded content and native advertising? It has so many names, it's become a buzzword. So perhaps you want to go first, Gloria? Well, yeah, I mean, it's actually kind of humorous because Becky and I just had a really big meeting um, and that was the subject. It was how much self-imposed language we put on ourselves in this business. It's branded entertainment, it's branded content, it's integrations. It's like there's so much language. Um, we had to do a little bit of clarity with Becky's bigger team. And the goal for us was to define the space and the practice in a way that worked for Intel. And you know how we're referring to it as content marketing, because all those pieces fit into, if you think about it, branded entertainment, branded content, all kind of bubble up into content marketing. So the language itself is confusing and it's part of, you know, the business that we're dealing with now. Yeah, I mean, the only thing I'd add is that the native piece is a very small piece of the bigger opportunity for advertisers and for brands to connect with our customers and potential customers. And it's probably, you know, as, a, as, an, as an advertiser and as a client, it's the, the the most exciting time to be in this business, especially in content, because there's a lot of different formats, a lot of new opportunities, the willingness and the acceptance from our customers to really, you know, accept this kind of content has been very positive. And so I think this is, you know, for us, you know, it's the, the area where we're investing the most in terms of understanding how to create quality content that is not just content that you know people will be okay to be interrupted by, but that'll be good enough that they'd be willing to pay for. Um, and so that's you know certainly you know in the age where there's a lot of disruption and there's a lot of interruption as people are trying to enjoy quality content, we want to be part of that um, experience of um, that positive experience of content that's contributing to our customers. And and if we stay with that for a second, you know obviously you've decided to kind of do some of that in-house, right? You mm -hmm. know, can you talk a little bit about why that's important? Why it's important, you know, as we're talking native ad, we're talking branded content. Why is it so important to kind of understand uh, the DNA of what you stand for as an advertiser as yeah. you start to kind of bring those narratives to life? But also, you know, how do you think about it when you then go to publishers like ourselves yes. and, and try to bring it alive on our platforms? How are you thinking about that? Yeah, so I, you know, I think the conversation about is it in-house, is it out, how do you use and you know, what, how do you use agency? is all you know where are you going to get your best your the best content and for us we in 2010 you know it's kind of interesting to take take you back a little bit on our journey in 2010 we came out with a curated uh, digital magazine called IQ um, IQ now today we have anywhere between five to seven million unique visitors per month globally in 17 different countries and we translate that in 12 different languages so it's definitely scaled from 2010 and when we launched it back in 2010, the original idea is that we were going to curate really great content about celebrating how people were using technologies to make to enhance their lives. And so we had this massive algorithm of how we find this content, and we were, you know, we weren't going to create original content because we weren't really exactly sure what that content was going to be. So we were going to curate other content from the web, from you know, from other publishers that we found. And what was interesting was that out of you know, the, the articles that we were curating, the only ones that were being read were the ones that we wrote, were the ones that were actually articles written by Intel. And so at that time, we had like a contract writer at that, you know, that was doing sort of you know, work for us. And we've hired on writers since then because we can't rely on, especially when you're talking about journalism, like editorial content, it's very hard if you don't have somebody sitting next to a product engineer or on the ground in one of our factories where you need to have a certain badge access. Like for us, that makes a lot of sense for us to do that kind of work in-house. When you talk about big production kinds of things, like because so you, that, that, you have that example of like journalistic co content and, and that format. 
all the way to producing a television series, which we're working on with Content Collective, with Claudia and her team, with Mark Burnett and his production team, and with Turner. You know, that, that we couldn't do in-house. So, so the, there's kind of an extreme of the way that we think about bringing that content, but we know that's really wonderful premium original content that we want to publish and be a part of because we want to, you know, really get into that branded entertainment. And then there's the editorial. So it's kind of a balance of the way that we think of, you know, and, and publishers I think is probably in the middle where um, you know your audience is better than we do. And so there's a wonderful opportunity for us to collaborate on that content creation with you knowing your audiences and us knowing our messages and our, you know, what is relevant to Intel. Um, and so I think that's, that's the balance of where you bring things in house, where it's more efficient, you get quality, you know, better quality in terms of the content um, versus, you know, using agencies and publishers and things like okay. that. Okay. Um, let me get to Claudia in a second as well. What's interesting here, I think, also is that's one model. It's one model where the advertiser actually have in-house resources mm -hmm. to do it. Uh, I know, and Claudia can talk about that in a second, that Claudia, you have also built, you've had to build as an agency resources that can now do editorial work. And obviously, we're a different model where we have actually had to do the same, right? Because mm -hmm. we wanted to you know, have a partner studio that could also bring the advertiser stories to life on, across our platforms. So, and you know, and again, as a publisher, that's obviously not our job, but but we had to do it to kind of get it going because you know a lot of the agencies and advertisers are not as sophisticated as you. But Claudia, t talk to me about kind of what's the thinking when you kind of had to bring that in house, so you also could help the advertisers and brands to bring uh, their stories to life across uh, across the web. So when you think about our business, it's really pretty simple. We exist because um, we leverage the the billions of dollars that our clients spend in the marketplace to create custom content with partners and. When we started this group five years ago, we made a decision to not be in the creative space because, as you guys know, Omnicom owns ad agencies and it was a business that we didn't really want to be in. It's highly competitive. And you know, publishers like AOL know their audience, which Becky mentioned, better than we do, obviously. So those partnerships are critical to our business. But as the business has evolved and data has become such an important part of content and content development, um, and if you think about the, the tools and resources we have as Omnicom with Analect, which is our, our marketing sciences group, and we just recently built a massive DMP, and we have programmatic buying capabilities. The piece that was missing in the chain for us was the ability to create very nimble, um, very quick social and digital content that can be delivered to very specific audiences through that data. So. Um, we launched a studio at the end of last year called Ready Made Studios that um, our first big test was with McDonald's on their all day breakfast campaign. So, um, so far so good. I think there's still a lot to figure out, but we believe that the demand for this is, is, is quite high, especially with a lot of our retail clients. If you think about the flexibility in their business and the fluidity and the need to kind of respond to consumers in real time. So um, we're excited to see for us that's going to be a big proof point this year. Um, one, of the, one of the other I think interesting notions that uh, is being talked about a lot here is that brands needs to be more like publishers and obviously you know from our perspective that's also why we recently took the partner studio and moved it closer to our content brand meaning that it came to my side of the house sitting closer to <laughs> The creation and ideation process, so we can really tap into that. You know, what do you what do you think? You know, when you think about publishers, what is it that, as an advertiser or as an agency, what is it, what is it that you want to see from the publishers? Uh, you know, when we talk about this uh, whole notion of you know publishing more content, because that is what we're talking about here. You know, when we're moving out of the right hand rail, moving into the content section, obviously it's narratives, it's stories, it's mm -hmm. different things than what we put in the traditional display units. Uh, so what is it from a publisher that, that you guys want to get back from a data, from a narrative, from, a, from an understanding perspective, uh, if, you, if you go first, Becky? Um, yeah, so I think like what we'd be, you know, this, is, this space is really still very early. And I think, you know, I, I reckon that there's, you know, some publishers that are, further along in terms of understanding, you know, where brands are. And I think the recognition of, we're still also trying to figure out exactly, you know, what is true to our brand? 
what is true to our tone of voice, what is true to, you know, as we think about our, our own audiences, the people that we're, you know, uh, have building those relationships with, that the, the quality of the message that's relevant, that resonates with ours. And then we add in to the publisher side of things, it makes, it does make things harder for us. Okay, are we breaking through in terms of our message? And I think the balance of your understanding of the audience is in creating something that is relevant to people that are attracted, coming to your site and to, to your experiences, to the things that we need to accomplish from a business perspective, and really finding that good balance of how do we do both of those things together. I mean, we've seen lots of, well, not lots, but there have been examples where we've got great engagement and really good, you know, integration, and it has zero brand impact on, for Intel. And while that was really great from an experience and, you know, it looks like on paper that that had, you know, really good engagement, if it, if it isn't still driving our, our business objectives, it isn't working for us. And so we have to make those messages really come through. We have to make that content align to our brand and our tone of voice and what we stand for. And so I think, you know, that recognition that this is kind of a, a, an iterative process is really important for, for publishers as they think about doing a lot more work like this with Just before like we us. move on to Claudia, on, on, on the results side of things, on mm -hmm. how success looking like, we should talk a little bit about, you know, how this, uh, how these changes and what it, what the implications are, you know, what, it, what is, you know, as you're investing more and more native outside and branded content, what is it that you're capable of doing with, with, with that and, and kind of what, what are the results you're seeing and how success looking like? Yeah, so we um, that we we've gotten you know native advertising in the in the in this the, the the piece of the of the native where we're integrating into editorial content that works you know that works better for us than any of our other placements. I mean, we get anywhere between you know fourteen to seventeen percent engagement on pieces that is significantly higher than some of our other advertising um, elements. And, and, and that's, that's why you're shifting more dollars into that. Yeah, because, because and it it gives us a chance. So Intel's we're, we we have a lot of products. We have a lot of stories, like our, our, our keynote last night was 90 minutes because there's a lot of things that we're doing. We're in sports now, and we announced a lot of uh, relationships with sports companies yesterday. We're doing wearables and Internet of Things. We have data centers. We have microprocessors that go into computers. So our breadth of stories that we can tell is very wide and very deep. Native gives us a chance. You know, it, the, the smaller format advertising doesn't give us a chance to connect all the way through to some of those deeper stories. And as we get into other parts of our business, as our business expands into things beyond the PC business and into things like the Internet things, it does require you know, us to tell deeper stories. Native is a great place for us to do that. Branded entertainment is a great place for us to connect to new audiences like makers. And that's why we're doing the America's Greatest Makers, which we're working on with Claudia and, and, uh, and her team with Turner and, and Mark Burnett, because that widens up and opens us up to new audiences with how you can you know create new things so it's been we're investing because it's aligned to our business objective and not because it's the buzzword in the in the advertising business because it is really driving and, and it's helping us achieve our business objectives um, more than some of the other traditional ways for us to reach new audiences Gloria can you elaborate a little bit on that and, and, and perhaps talk a little bit about you know when advertisers come to you you know how are they seeing it you know how does it does it fit in their broader you know, marketing mm -hmm. programs uh, and, and, and kind of what are the, again, what are the things that they want when, uh, when they come to you for those programs? Uh, it's interesting because it's different for every client. As you can imagine, if it's a CPG company or a business like Becky's, um, you know, the thing that's consistent, though, across the board is in, in last year and this year, and even more so as we go into this year, all of our clients are looking at content marketing as a discipline now. So it requires an annual strategy. It requires much more rigor and long-term thinking. Um, it's a business. So it's an integral part of the marketing mix that we're approaching. And I think you guys probably know we just won Procter & Gamble. And um, my group is the entertainment agency of record. And you know, how they're going to be evolving that business and moving, you know, even further into the space is going to be fascinating to see this year. But, you know, again, every client approaches it a little bit differently. And the strategy for us and that development and that kind of front end rigor is, is really critical um, to, you know, versus like one off situations that are really hard to manage ongoing. 
So let's talk a little bit about what we are seeing in, in 16, what you guys are expecting. You know, are we going to see more video? You know, how is, you know, mobile, of course, is, has, has taken off in, in a great way. And how is native and branded content fitting into those things? Uh, Becky, what are you seeing in, in yeah, 16? Yeah, I mean, definitely video, mobile, uh, everything. <laughs> it's, okay. it's, uh, this, well, when you this say video, what does that mean for, from a native or branded content or yeah, content so marketing perspective? For video for us, we, um, you know, yesterday we announced our first video portal. And that, that was actually a really big deal for us. We had a digital magazine that was longer form editorial content where we post, you know, articles and, and we have video integrated in, into the articles. And yesterday was our first video portal that's aligned to America's Greatest Makers. And that's where, you know, it, it, it looks like a video distribution platform, basically. And we did that um, because, one, it's a place where we want to have all the content for the, the television series, but it's also... The, the entrance for us to be able to cr really have a great way for us to uniquely position all of our video content that we have today. If you think of YouTube, we've got our websites, we've got Facebook, we've got different places where we have things today. A video kind of destined portal makes a lot of sense for us as we combine things and talk about different kinds of experiences. And that's really, you know, if our, our CEO, Brian Krasanich, talked a lot about our ability to deliver those amazing experiences and those can't be done through kind of your traditional like an analog format those do like to to really experience and something that's rich and unique you need to have you do doing that through video and so we're investing in that kind of distribution and video like formats uh pretty significantly this year across the board on all the content Claudia, what what are you seeing 16. I think two of the areas um, that are of great interest to us for you know a couple of reasons with specific clients. I, we're really curious to see how AOL, uh, I'm sorry, um, Amazon is going to evolve with their studio offering and kind of connecting the dots with their e-commerce model, their ad model, their data, and now their content studio. That's all evolving. I mean, we have not seen yet how that's coming, you know, going to come together ultimately, but very excited to work with them and see how that evolves and also interested to see what happens with go 90 so you know that mobile focused execution for us is going to be critical and you know the way that we typically move into these spaces is we'll take a project and we'll <clears throat> test it with a platform and take that learning and then you know use that across the board with several clients so for us those are the two things for me this year that i'm really interested to see how they're going to evolve um, let, let's try to be a little bit more tangible on, on some of the, the things, some of the programs that you guys have done. So, you know, Becky, can you talk about kind of what in 15 was a particular successful uh, thing that you did in native advertising branded content within Intel? And, and also, yeah. be great if you could, if you have an example of something that you've seen out there that are not necessarily Intel, but but you know, that you thought was actually great executed in, uh, in 15. Yeah, so we, we did a program in Q4 that was um, the first time we've done anything to this scale where we brought together Intel, Microsoft, HP, Dell, and Lenovo, so five companies to, to bring together a, a campaign in Q4 um, that was solely focused on native advertising. So we actually didn't run any digital, traditional digital placements. It was television and native advertising. And we did somewhere along the lines of like 600 different unique articles. We curated those onto a website and then we, you know, moved people through the journey as they, depending on where they were interested in some of that different kind of content. That was, that was very risky um, considering that you ha you're trying to bring together five companies. You're bringing publishers together that also have a different tone and voice um, in a time when, you know, we had Windows 10 and we had a lot of new products from our partners and our OEMs and we had Intel's uh, six gen core processor. Um, and that was, that was pretty bullish and bold for us to, to do that together with our partners. And, and what was the objective and what was the you know, results of, of, of that? If the objective any? was to drive demand for Windows 10 for Windows based, 10. Uh, yeah, Intel 5th, 6th Gen Core, Windows 10, HP, Lenovo, and Dell systems. And, and how did you execute on that? You know, are you starting with the brand story, the narrative, uh, and, and how do you get it through the funnel and so actually to drive that objective? Yeah, the way that we thought about it is there was a higher level in terms of that awareness that there was something new that had happened to the PC business that hasn't happened in many, many years. It, there was, has not been a time when you had a new operating system 
We had a new microprocessor and new formats, new beautiful systems from our partners all at one time. You may have a new OS, you may have a new system from partners, but n there wasn't a time when all three, of, when those three things came together to significantly change the way people were thinking about the PCs. And so we wanted to, all five of us, build a campaign together that showcased, that brought attention to, this isn't the same kind of PC that you've been thinking about. It can do different kinds of things. So this, this PC consortium campaign is what we were calling it, was a, an umbrella campaign that then each of our, our own companies were able to, uh, you know, that we were part of that broader campaign where we could talk about our specific messages and continue that, that customer journey all the way through to the purchase. So that and we partnered with what, like 10 different, we had many lots different Lots of product partners. integrations with Claudia's team, a lot of custom content that we built. And the um, custom content, uh, you know, because obviously when you talk about that, it, sound, it sounds very product focused, but obviously, you know, as we all know, when we talk about branded content, we need to take a step back from the product and actually talk about the world of narrative, the brand and the stuff like that. How do you, how did you combine those things? So you kind of did that and at the same think, time I don't drove... I think you have to do that. Like, I don't think that native or, or branded content has to be about always about the brand. Right. I think that it's content from the brand, but I don't think of it as as it purely has to be about the, the kind of the, the, the brand message. You can do product, uh, integrated product content. So was it very product-led? It was very product-led because it was about signaling that something as, is different and new and that this is the time, if there's any time to think about going in and buying a PC, that would be the time to do it. But with like late night and talk show environments, which we were heavily involved in, you can't control that message. You know, we turn it over to the writers of those shows and you know it's a leap of faith so that's scary for some clients um, and you know for others it's something that you just have to understand and know and manage expectations yeah so that was that was a huge program that we did the I talked about a couple of the other ones already with the America's Greatest Makers and we've been you know we have a stream we call it an always on stream which is you know it's a, it's a layer of our media investment and a layer of our content development that is always on and always focused 365 days a year of um, content that we're, you know, we monitor socially, we look for conversation pickup, we're able to turn other content around very fast, like the next day or within hours, just based on that conversation theme. And that's a practice that we've been running, you know, pretty consistently over the last couple of years. Claudia, anything you want to add before we have to prep? Um, just, I think for us, one of the big things that we did this year, a couple of things, um, we launched Apple Music, and that was a really eye-opening, interesting experience, and, you know, it's a very different product, um, and a very different kind of cultural shift for the Apple Beats guys that came into kind of the traditional Apple environment, and we did produce a lot of custom content with Vice and Complex and, and you know, uh, platforms that would make sense for Apple Music. So that was really eye-opening and, um, you know, we're still rolling out a lot of that content. And then I think you guys probably saw we did um, a really big program for Pepsi with Empire. And the results of that were phenomenal. So. Um, yeah, those are two of the big ones for us. Okay. Thank you for coming. Okay. Quick, uh, quick wrap. We're running out of time. Uh, it, it sounds like uh, branded content, native advertising is here to stay, uh, no matter what we call it. So. Uh, it's, <laughs> it's something that we're going to see a lot more investment in in, uh, in 16, both from, uh, you know, from, from the advertisers, <coughs> which is great news. We're going to see more video, uh, it, it sounds like. And last but not least, which I think is great news uh, for us as publishers, but, but I think also for the agencies and for the advertisers, is that it sounds like you know, native advertising branded content is no longer just about the brand narratives. It actually also, you know, yeah. from your last campaign, it's actually also able to drive all the way through to sale, which obviously um, is, is a great way um, and a great segue to, uh, to kind of end this. You know, we are, we are not only driving brand awareness, we are also able to use it to, to drive directly to sale. Yeah. Thank you all for coming. Have a great CS. Thank you. All right.